All right, welcome to week six. As of last week, we'd already covered all the material for the semester. All I'm going to talk about today is uh, I'll give you guys some information about the midterm, which is next week. Um, well, that's pretty much all I'm doing. And okay, so these are usually the first couple of things everybody asks. Um, oh shoot, there's a mistake on the slide. Hang on. Of course, there's a mistake on the slide. Let's try that again. There we go. Um, I'll explain in a second why that I just changed that. But anyways, so it's a 54 multiple choice question. One answer per question. There is no fill in the blank. No short answer. No code. No diagramming. Okay, it's literally multiple guess. If you bring a 1D4, you can probably pass the test. It's closed book. That's how it is. Uh, you have an hour and a half here in class. Um, I already explained this to a few students, but um, there is certain standards for length of test. Um, normally, how long you have to do a test. Uh, there's a standard for the universities. There's a standard for colleges. So university standard is 30 seconds a question for multiple choice. The college standard is something like 55 or 50 seconds a question. I give a lot more because historically, most of my class is not English first language. Looking in this room, two. Maybe three have English as their first language. You know, I'm not even English first language. So, you know, I'm counting myself in that list of English not first language. So I give a lot more time. So we have 54 questions over 90 minutes. That's a minute and a half, minute, 20 seconds per question. It's pretty much double the standard. Um, it's worth 25% of the final grade. You just saw me adjust this in the slide. Because it used to be the midterm was 20, the final exam was 30%. But because they're both, they only cover that part of the semester, like the final exam only covers from after the break, it didn't make sense for that one to be worth 30% when the first one was only worth 20%. So the final exam is worth a little bit less, the midterm is worth a little bit more, and it evens it out because we're covering the same amount of material for each test. All right. What kind of topics are you going to see? Yes, ER diagrams are going to be on the test in the sense of what is this symbol? And there's a picture. What is, you know, uh, the symbol for this kind of entity or this kind of attribute or this kind of relationship? There's actual pictures that you have to pick the right, you know, this is what it is, so you pick the right one. Entities, attributes, and relationships. There's questions about what kind of relationships, what are entities. What are attributes, keys, that kind of thing. Normalization, know your definitions. Literally, know what first normal form is, know what second normal form is, and know what third normal form is. I took some of the feedback from the, you know, hybrid questions, and I made sure that the midterm didn't have those issues for people that were confused because it was assuming certain things. Uh, general questions about database design, as in, pick the data type. Um, what would be the appropriate data type for this, or of those kinds of things? Uh, there'll be questions on indexes and views. Mostly, what is the syntax, and what are they? There might be a few questions about risks. That's actually a really big hint, but anyways, because I spent some time talking about them. Now. The topic breakdown, okay? So you'll notice I have the tilde in front of the numbers as in approximately this many questions because some of the questions kind of fall between two, so I picked the most appropriate. Um, ER diagrams, entities, attributes, and relationship, in other words, just basic design, 14 questions, roughly. Normalization, there's 17 questions. Database design, there's 18 questions. Indexes and views, there's five. 
Um, now, some people are going to say, well, holy cow, normalization. Uh, that's a lot of questions. Um, for example, I'll warn you guys now, this is something the first time I've ever done this. I don't know how well it's going to go, so I'm going to be generous with the grading. There is, on the last page of the test, there's a table of data, and I will ask you five questions about this table of data, which is pretty much where the 50, you know, there's now 54 questions. The test used to be 45. So five of those extra questions are coming from that one table of data is going to say, hey, uh, what combination of attributes would be a candidate key or what might be the partial dependency? And you look at the data and you pick the appropriate answer. Yeah, I'm not getting you to do the normalization, but there's questions about here's some data. Here's some questions about how the normalization process for it. Um, so it's giving people a chance to also work with the theor theoretical knowledge and a little bit of the applied knowledge. Um, okay. So usually people say, well, does it include the stuff from the hybrids? Technically, no. Um, realistically, everything on the test I covered in class. There's a theory, there's a hybrid midterm that covers the stuff from the hybrid, which will now, I will now address questions about that that I've been receiving for the last week. No, you don't get to see the answers before you do the midterm. Why? Because I'm recycling the questions. No, you don't get to see the answers before the midterm exam, the written midterm, because at that point, if you see the answers, you can share your answers with other people that are about to go write the mid the hybrid. N okay, now I'm going to answer two more questions that come off often at this point. Do I get to have a copy of the test paper? No. I don't even need to go there. You don't get to have a copy of the test paper. Um, on. It's going to be hard for you guys to see, but this is what the front looks like. They're in my bag. I just picked them up. Okay, this is what the front looks like. I'm actually far away enough that if I flick like this really quickly, you can see the table of data. Right? I made sure the camera won't pick it up either. <laughs> but it is, um, the re one of the reasons why you don't get to keep the task paper is I can only come up, come up with so many questions year after year, so I tend to reuse some from one test to the next, or variations thereof. A man has only so much imagination about the same topic. I've been teaching this topic in various courses now for 17 years. There's only so many questions that I'm not, I write midterm, I write tests in such a way that some profs like we're asking the same question three times with slightly different words. I like asking the question once with very clear words. I ask you the question, you answer it. I don't need to test you three times and try to trick you to get the answer right or wrong. The other reason why you don't get to keep the test is this is your attendance. You'll notice there's lines on the front. You print your name, you write your student number, and then you sign. And please, Write your name with the English flavor of it. I can't read moon. I can't read moon runes. Okay, I can't. I can't read any Asian languages because I never learned them. Latin languages, I can usually figure it out. So you know, um, but this is your attendance. The other thing you will do is you will circle your answers on this test, as well as fill out the Scantron sheet. I'll be showing you guys an example of what that looks like in a minute. Why? Some people ask, why do I need to answer my questions on the paper and on the Scantron sheet? Does anybody here want to take a guess why? Not a good sign, dude. So every once in a while, the Scantron machine eats somebody's tests. Eats it. And then the, the test center goes to me and go, oh, this student's test was not scanned because the machine 
jammed. You'll have to come and pick up the, the tests. Oh, and by the way, in three days, because it's going to be three days before you can pick up your test. And then you got to grade it by hand. In the meantime, I go digging through the box. I find the person's test, and I just grade it by hand at home. Right? And then your grades show up like the next day. Um, yes, it, it actually happened last semester to one student. Luckily, they were one of the ones I actually did on the paper. Um, I'm all about efficiency. The other reason this is also your attendance, because that way we don't need to do a separate attendance sheet. We don't need to have everybody come up after and then sign a piece of paper saying, I took the test. No, duh. You signed the test. You gave me a signed copy of your test. That's pretty much that. Okay, what to bring to the midterm? HB pencil, or two, or more, depending how lucky or unlucky you are with your pencils. Um, I literally have only one HB pencil left. So you're not getting mine because I need it for my Scantron sheet that I use. A sharpener if you're not using a mechanical pencil. Good quality eraser. The white ones are usually pretty good. Bring something to drink in case you gag out during the test. It happens. Snot rags, also known as Kleenex or tissue papers. To blow your nose or wipe your tears, as the case may be. I've had cases where students had allergy attacks and their eyes just were just gushing. They weren't crying, their just eyes were pouring. I kind of felt bad because I really thought they were doing badly about the test, but it was their allergies. It is what it is, right? Um, other things of note. Now, this all will be in a, most of this will be in an announcement. So, you know, it'll be here next Thursday at four o'clock. And there's one rule, and I'm going to make sure this is in the announcement. If you show up late and one person has already left, you do not get to write. People go, why would you put such a rule? Because they walk out, they have a conversation with whoever's in the hall waiting. Tell them, hey, by the way, that, you know, A, C, D, 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 A, E, A, E, A, blah, 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 blah. Right? And the person comes in and they just go, because they're running late. I've seen it. That's why. I don't want to have to do the damn paperwork. Because it takes 20 minutes of paperwork to fill out if I catch someone cheating. Per person. Please don't cheat. Don't make me waste my time. Because I'm going to hate you ever so much okay so don't be late and i'm going to put that in the announcement big red letters don't be late okay now um if you can't have cal accommodations and you need extra time book it in cal because i cannot give you extra time in this class why i have a class after this class and if your accommodation is for 50% more time, I'll be late for my next class. If your accommodation is for 100% more time, there's I'll be late for my class after that, almost. So if you need Cal accommodations, an extra time, please book it. Um, and when it's time for final exams, you got to book like three weeks ahead of time. So just saying. Arrive on time. Well, I've already told you guys that. Then I already talked about the test paper being your attendance. Okay, Scantron tips. I'm sure none of your profs have actually described this properly discussed Scantron. First, don't do what I did with this. I used a pen. Why? Because my scanner didn't like my pencil. Okay, you must use a pencil. You use a pen, it will not scan. Why? Ink is not reflective, graphite is. In case you ever wondered why you have to use a pencil on Scantron sheet. Yes, Carleton University Scantron machine can take pen. Congrats, their budget, their machine isn't 24 years old. Or more. Like, we had a, I know one of the Scantron machines we have is at least 30 years old. It does the job. They finally got it working with Windows 10. For the longest time, we had a self serve scan machine. And it was running on Windows 7. Not even Windows 8. 
Windows 7 until they finally managed to get it working with Windows 10. Um, so use a pencil. Bring a really good eraser, because that's the typical tip. You must fill in your name and your student number. Notice I wrote my name and I filled in the bubbles. Scantron can't read your letters. Make sure you fill in your bubbles. I'll be checking them before you leave. But sometimes, you know, four people show up and I miss one. So I'll check it before you leave. You should fill in the instructor's name and the test name. Sometimes people ask, why should you have to fill in the instructor's name and the test name? Somebody at the test center, because I just drop off the tests for scanning, it's been known that they, oops, tests are all over the floor. And there's been cases where the tests get mixed up. Not now, there's, the summer term's not bad, but the winter term, you know, the not the winter, the fall term, so in December, when the entire school is writing final exams all at the same time and you got two workers working with the two scantron machines and they yeah write my name and write midterm it just makes everybody's life better optional things to fill in the answers i can't force you to write the answers in so it's optional okay when you're filling in your answers fill in the complete circle see the good example Actually, I can probably zoom in on this. There we go. Okay. Good. Fills in the entire circle. The blank line is, whoops, you forgot one. Um, bad. You'll notice a varying examples of bad. If the circle's not full, it might not pick it up. It can't read check marks. This one has a partial fill in because the person was lazy. This one is bad because you'll notice there's a little bit of crap here. They didn't erase properly. You know how hard that was to do with a pen? Make it look like I didn't erase. So this is a bad erasing job. Oh yeah, and it can't read X's either. Okay, so a lot of people say, well, why is the one on line seven so bad? Here's a pro tip. Scantron reads left to right. So therefore it looks at bubble A, bubble B, Bubble C. And if B has enough in it that it gets picked up, and then it sees C, it'll reject it as either an invalid question or an invalid row, and it gets marked. And the fun thing is, is the people at the test center are not going to pull out your test to double check what the answer is. They just scan them and send me the file. And I don't get the papers until after your grades are due. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, it reads left to right. So if it's a bad erasing job, it's not terrible. It's not super bad. Like it will work 99% of the time. It's just, there's been the odd time where, you know, it's a little fussy. So just be careful with it and you should be fine. Um, as always, if you have, oops, nope, not that. If you have any problems, and your Scantron sheet's kind of mangled, just put your hand up with your Scantron sheet and I'll run you a fresh one. There's literally like a half hour of time left in the class after the end of the test. You have time to finish filling it in. It's just, I'd rather, you know, you all not have to do that too many times. Um, oh yeah, same thing with a student number. Make sure you fill out your student number uh, because they, the, the template they're using at the test center shows the students by, um student number and then by name which is fun sometimes we have people whose names don't fit in all the boxes and you end up end up with a cutoff name and regularly i'll have cases where for some unknown reason the name doesn't scan in properly where i get like g asterisk 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 r asterisk asterisk it becomes a mystery at that point so at least if i have most of a student number i can usually find the person okay so that's the info for the midterm. Does anybody have questions? Yeah. No, no. Multiple choice, one answer each. Maximum four options, usually, I think, yeah. Pretty sure I didn't do any five question options. 
So it's, you know, I got, I got a 25% chance of getting any question right, even if you're guessing. Which is why I was saying, you know, if you bring a 1D4, you have a, you know, equal chance of passing the test. Um, but yeah, no, no, there's, and then the, here's the question, why do I not do fill in the blank and or long form written answers? Anybody want to take a guess why I don't do that? I don't want to deal with your handwriting. It's terrible. I'm not saying anybody in here in this class specifically, but with level one database for the CET and CP students, they have handwritten sections in both the midterm and the final exam. I've had cases where I could not read a person's answers at all. Couldn't read it. So what did I do? If I can't grade it, they get a goose egg. It's just how it is. So, yes, that's why there's no handwritten sections. Yep. Okay, most of the questions are based on understanding. There's very little memorization. Okay. It'll be questions of, Frank is creating this kind of table and he needs to populate this field. What kind of day type does he pick? Bob is doing a series of database diagrams. Which one should he do first? It's questions about understanding, not rote memorization. Yeah, there's a bit of rote memorization in the sense of, you know, the definitions for the normal forms. You know, that kind of thing. That's the kind of memorization, yes. If you know the, mem the definition for each of the normal forms, congrats, you got two or three questions right. Out of 54, it's a good start. Um, there's, like I said, there's very little memorization, as in, it's based on the slides and what I covered in class. Plus, yes, the stuff from the hybrids, the PDFs that were provided to you are there to give you additional knowledge and help you understand the material better. That's, you know, as in when people say, is the material from both? Technically, yes, because it's asking you how well you understand the knowledge, not memorization. Does that sound pretty reasonable? All right, any more questions? Okay. Are going to be what? In a random form? No, not really. I mean, they're all the same test. I didn't do like five different A, B, C, D, E versions of it. That, that's not worth my time. Um, is that what you meant? Like, is, yeah, no. I sh really should, but I don't. Um, no, well, no, it's just, the problem is, is that at that point is I have to get the students to write down which version of the test they have on their Scantron sheet. I've had cases where students don't even remember their name on the Scantron sheet. It's just, I might, my goal with this, these tests is to make it as straightforward for you guys as humanly possible which makes it straightforward for me. So yeah, everybody's got the same test. I am going to try to spread everybody out a bit. So like, you know how there's nobody sitting here? Well, there's going to be people sitting here. And that has room for three. This has room for four, five, and then I can do the same all the way back. Back two rows are almost empty there. So everybody be spread out. Mind you, only half the group showed up today. So you know. Uh, but yeah, this test will be spread out amongst everybody. And it's also, you know, laptops in your bag, bag under the desk, phone in your bag, preferably muted, because I will make fun of you if your phone rings during the test. I've had one case where one person's test, their phone went off five times during a final exam, which was not for this course, but it was for another course where there was six sections of the course writing at the same time for them in the gym. And the person had to do the walk of shame to go turn off their phone from the very back of the gym all the way to the front. So don't do that. Um, just put your phone on, do not disturb, put it in your bag. Smart watches.
I don't want to see them. That was right now is cool. During the test, that shit gets put in your bag. Why? I'm just checking the time. Yes, I've seen it. That's why I'm bringing it up. I don't want to have to do the paperwork after I confiscate your watch. It's a, almost as expensive as a cell phone, as cheap cell phones. Actually, they're more expensive than some cheap cell phones you can get from China. So, you yeah, know. Smartwatches, Fitbits, that crap, just put it all away so there's no guessing. I think that's fair. Yep. Absolutely, I'll be using that computer and you'll have a big fat timer up there with the numbers counting down to stress absolutely everybody out. No, just don't look. Um, I might actually just put it up for like the last 30 minutes so that it's not, it's only going to beep when it goes off. I see, but some people get stressed off. They don't know the time. See, some people want to know the time. Some people don't want to know the time. It's a catch 22. I make some people happy. I make some people sad. No matter what, it's going to, somebody's not going to be happy. Just reread the PDFs so they're fresh. That's all. Just you don't need to memorize the PDFs. Just give them a once over, because you've already done them for the hybrids. So give it a once, once, once over read. I mean, they're most of them are what four to five pages long. I think there's only one that's longer than there's one. One's about eight or ten. So they're not like I'm not asking you to read War and Peace. Just reread it. Or at least you can scan it to refresh yourself. With the, you know, skip the introduction and, you know, scan the rest. Now I'll make sure I pick questions from the introduction. But there's no questions that lift directly from those tests. It's those texts. It's just knowledge. Like it's literally understanding, not memorization as much as I could. Okay, there was another hand that was kind of wobbling over there. Yeah, so the hybrid had a few issues, and I know they do, and I'm currently regrading them. Um, essentially, some of the, a lot of the, some of them. So in the multiple choice, the biggest one that caused grief was the normalization ones. I've avoided that particular choice of wording. They're much more explicit. Um, there's no fill in the blank. Don't have to worry about that. Um, Brightspace was being extra special with how it was handling the fill in the blanks. It was not doing them the way their documentation says it did it. I discovered the hard way. Um, but yeah, no, there's, I tr I'm, there's, I'm hoping, knock on wood, there's no real wood in here, but knock on wood, that they, I, I pretty much made sure that the questions were clear and straightforward. That there's a few questions in there that might be confusing a little bit, but that's actually intentional because if you don't understand the material, you won't know which one it is. But if you understand the material, it'll be obvious which one it is, if that makes sense. They're not meant to be trick questions. They're, you know, um, there are a few questions, you know, yeah, I got A, B, C, or all the above, or A and C kind of thing. But any given question only has one correct answer, and it's pretty clear. Um, I did have someone go through the midterm that wasn't me. Uh, I was uh, one of my former students from a different court, or like a different program. And um, he went through the test and he goes, it's pretty clear, pretty straightforward. Nothing, no major things. He had a few comments about two questions and they were valid and that got fixed. So, okay. Any other questions?
Hmm. See, teacher, I want you to understand as deeply as you humanly can. Do you have to actually be have like a PhD in my slides? No. Oh, no, no, nothing detailed like that. Yeah, yeah, nothing. Does not go in depth about indexes. It's like, uh, what is an index kind of question, you know? And actually, some of them might be true, false type questions at that. There are yes, no type questions. So those ones even have a 50-50 chance of getting it right. Um, yeah, no, no. You, you don't need to go into super in-depth, but you need to understand it. The test is testing your understanding of the material, not your memorization skills. Talking about the B tree stuff, that'd be like almost memorization skills, right? The memorizing how it works. Yeah, no, it's not. They don't go into like that much detail. At least I don't think so. At least I don't think so. That's an example of not to do next week. <laughs> no, one answer per. No, no, there's literally one answer. You can only fill in one bubble. So there's not a pick the best two or pick the top three. It's literally A, B, C, or D. One answer per question. And I made sure that there's no such thing as pick the most correct answer. And you think I'm I'm joking, but I've seen a, somebody else's midterm where they came in and on the first page is pick the most correct answer. Now, there's no such thing on this test. It's either it's right or it's wrong. <laughs> I make a point of not doing stupid shit like that. All right. Any other questions? Going once, going twice, going three times. Okay. That was it. Like, literally, we're, that was it. <laughs>